I love Stranger Things. Um, I love King Puppets. Yeah, Game of Thrones. Um, Riverdale. Um, I think they like that one too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's fun being here with other CW people too. Um, you know the Arrow people, and, and um, yeah, it's great. There's so many, so many different things. But uh, I saw a really nice Black Panther happening out there. That was pretty cool. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, the first season of Riverdale, when it kind of hit, it, it, it sort of symbolizes the way that we're consuming TV differently. It was available all by uh, Netflix. It did really well, and then it did even better on streaming. I uh, wonder if uh, you're sort of able to share that when you get the scripts, are you uh, able to share the experience of consuming the story like we do? Like, you know, do you get all the scripts at the same time? Do you know where the story's gonna go? No, yeah, so we, we basically get a script. Each each episode takes eight days to shoot. Then we get a script uh, right before we start shooting. So we didn't know, for instance, who killed Jason until we all sat and read the script together. Um, so we, we really get it and then that's it. So I have no idea what's happening in season three. I knew the finale. I, knew, I found out who the Black Hood was right uh, before we shot it. So it's it's crazy. We have no idea what's happening. Do you guys have to, to like time to like talk about it or be shocked or, or no? Just get to work. And like an hour. It's crazy. <laughs> or like a, an evening. You know, we'll be like, well, oh, there, there's so many crazy things happening in Riverdale that at this point we're like, oh, they died. <laughs> One of the things that I thought it was funny that when uh, they were talking about the, your, the character you played when he was incorporated into the comics, it's, it was sort of like a, we want to do inclusion, and yeah. you know, because Riverdale, it's a place where everybody's safe and Absolutely. welcome. But the TV version of Riverdale, not everybody is safe. So is that kind of funny, you know, the way that that, that apparently the Black Hood decided certain people were not okay, and then he tried to murder them. But. Uh, yeah, not everybody's safe, but I do think it's a very welcoming town in terms of who each kid is and what he, what they, what we all bring to the table, character-wise. Um, everybody's accepted for who they are, which is great. So once you knew, because I know you auditioned, and but once you were cast in the role, did you uh, look, uh, read the comments, and do research, or did you pretty much stick to what the script is? Yeah, I did. You did. I, 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 I wish I would have. You know, like I, I like to be honest about this. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I read one comic. Um, I got a few, we, uh, Roberto, our head writer, has his own comic, he sent that to us. I've read a few of the Kevin comics, sorry. There's one where Kevin grows up and moves to New York, I really like that one. Um, but I haven't read too many. I didn't grow up reading comic books. Oh, wow. So, um, that was different for me to be inducted in this role, but now that I'm in it, I'm definitely much more interested in everything, especially like when you come to a convention like this, you want to just go bonkers downstairs, so. Hopefully I can sneak into some of those exhibits. <laughs> cool. So one of the things I wanted to uh, ask you, uh, how is the relationship with the writer in terms of, are you able to sort of, is it back and forth, or because it, your series is very much hinges upon plot and mystery, so are you able to talk about where you want the character to go, or something that you can suggest? It's, it's um, yes and no. We have, a, we have a team of writers. We have a, we have a group of writers, um, and we have a head writer. Um, so basically they make a script, they write a script, and then head writer edits it. Um, usually during this three months, uh, we're on a break right now, um, we each you know, grab a meal with our head writer and he kind of pitches some story ideas to us. And, uh, but, but to be honest, it's all them. Like, I, I don't really have any idea or choice in what Kevin does. If there's something I really don't like, I can be like, hey man, I, I'd appreciate it if we didn't do this. And they're very good about that. But um, I always want more Kevin. I always want more of the character. So um, I'm hoping this next year that that's going to happen. Uh, now more than ever, rep representation has you know become more important uh, given the climate of what's going on. So did you feel the responsibility of that taking the role on, uh, or, or given the fact that Kevin's sexuality is not even stressed or is an issue? So, uh, but the, having the character there is important. So I wanted your wanted your take on that issue. I, I don't think of pressure, but more of you know, a privilege of playing a character like this in a show like this, um, where Kevin is completely accepted for who he is and no one really challenges him in that, um, is, is great. Um, again, the writers dictate what the characters are like and then it's our job to bring them to life. And I think the writers have done a really good job of creating super um, dense, three-dimensional people that makes it a lot easier for us as the actor. 
turn into real life right in front of the camera and that's it but but i don't think there was a pressure i think it was more of like an honor it's it's a blast and kevin such a fun character you guys is he's ridiculous right so so playing him is so much fun and the way they write him is um it's just a blast it's a blast what's the most fun you've had playing kevin or favorite moment that you've gotten to do as him um um i really like the musical episode that was fun yeah um were you familiar with the characters that go i was yeah, yeah. i actually was <laughs> um so i really like that i you know what's funny i haven't watched i've, I've watched most of the show but the pilot the last time i watched the pilot was like two and a half years ago and i watched last night i was on the plane here and it was on the plane it was on the plane <laughs> I was like, I finished my movie that I was gonna watch it. And I was like, I have 45 minutes, and I watched it. It was so fun, um, and I just have such fond memories of shooting that first episode when like Moose and I are like walking down that little valley, and then we trip over the dead body, or we have that we have this really fun lunch scene during that. Um, but it was my first time ever being on a set, so I, I didn't know what I was doing. But I have really fond memories of that. So given that you went on the second season, you shot an independent movie and all that sort of stuff, do you have a ritual now? Uh, like if you if we go with you. Look at the sides. What do you do? What's what's your ritual when you're actually yeah. shooting an episode? I I um so we do know the schedule for the next day. I usually the night before, kind of like make a little open area in my apartment and kind of just like do it, do do the scene in my head the way I think it's going to be done. Make sure I have the lines completely learned, and then the next day you can just have fun because you already know the lines and you're already so comfortable with being on set. And we all know how each other works, so we do that, and then usually we get to set, we get our hair and makeup done. There's a lot of makeup, and then we um, run, we just run the words while we're getting our hair and makeup done, and then we just have a blast. A lot of snacks, uh, a lot of a lot of coffee. That's it. How quickly would you say, because one of the great things about the show is the ensemble, uh, so how quickly would you say that you guys found that rhythm? Did you feel like you found it in the first season or in more along the line where you were shooting the second one? I think, I think both. I think um, each, each person is really coming to their own character, I think. Um, not that they weren't there in the beginning, but I think as we move along, as we've moved along, we, we've literally done 36 episodes now. Um, and each time, it's now it's now it's a well-oiled machine. We walk in. I mean, gr granted, it's a difficult show to shoot because a lot of stuff is outside. A lot of stuff is like, how do I act the fact that my classmate just died, but now we're having lunch and everything is okay? You know, it's really weird. Um, <laughs> but it, but it is a well-oiled machine, and it's fun to watch everyone grow. And and um, we have so many characters, so it's fun to see each person come in and figure out what they're doing. And it's great. You guys get to rehearse at all, or does the grind of the TV? Because I know TV schedules don't allow for that. Yeah, we don't really rehearse. We, we take time to rehearse before the scene, just just um, on our own as actors. Yeah, we're like, hey, let's run this, let's run this. Or if you have the most dialogue, like I'm doing a scene with KJ, who plays Archie. Um, be like, hey, can we can we run this? And I'll be like, of course. And then we just run the lines four or five times. And then you're good. I promised them I was going to do like. But sometimes we don't run the lines. Don't run the lines. <laughs> that gets really funny when you're shooting and someone doesn't know their lines. I'm sure your director appreciates it. They love that. it. They love us. Oh my god, they love Good us. Good outtakes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, the blooper reel's coming out soon. I saw it yesterday, so get ready for that. <laughs> right, so I had promised just to ask uh, like four questions that I've asked like ten. So if you guys have a question, uh, don't be shy. Don't get be up shy. You can start. There's start a big lining. microphone sitting I'll right there. I'll talk to him the whole hour, but I mean like if you That's right. Have, That's uh, right. Get up. I uh, have, have a question. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Um, this microphone is so sweet. <laughs> I have many questions for you, but I'm just going to ask you one, and I'm going to ask you if you always knew that you wanted to be an actor. No, I decided I wanted to be an actor um, when I was probably 16 or 17. I didn't start acting until I was late. I wanted to be a, a sports broadcaster. Wow. So quite the, quite yeah, the uh, 180. <laughs> um, but I did a high school musical when I was 16. I just fell in love with it then. So I was really late. Also, like you hear stories of people like Morgan Freeman who didn't start acting until they were like 40. Mm -hmm. um, so you can always become an actor. It's it's, it's something you can just start doing. Whatever. Thank you. Hi, Casey. Hey, thank you for coming to Puerto Rico. Thanks for having me, guys. This place is awesome. 
you fly and you hear you hear you hear the waves and you're like, I'm never leaving. This is amazing. Take ten. So my question is, if you could choose a role as a superhero, what would it be and why? Like a specific super superhero or a specific like super trait? Uh, superhero. Uh, any mm. any universe. So you're being put in the spot, you have to choose the universe first. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> I think, you know what, I, I think Batman is pretty like, there we go. Like that dude is like next level, he has a car, he has a cave, he can like kind of fly, he has a sidekick, and he constantly, I, I, a I, butler. I he has a butler, <laughs> um, who's British, um, he's got everything, so I think, I always thought Batman's pretty cool, but, Spider Man is also pretty bad, and I see what he did there. I think I think I think I, I, I used to be Batman, and now I'm now I'm pretty into Spider Man. Like he's a stud. He's got he's basically a human spider, um, and he just like goes like this, and it's next level. So Kyle, I go Spider Man. All right, final answer, Spider Man. Thank you. What's up, Eleven? The ceiling. Ah. Uh, Ah. So, I wanted to ask, what's the hardest part about playing him? Um, the hardest part about playing Kevin is that I just always wish I had more. I always want to be in a show more. Um, I always want more stories, and I always want to be on set more because I really enjoy it. Um, so I guess the uh, hardest thing is something that could uh, change literally tomorrow. So hoping to have more in season three. And, but it's, it's very fun to play Kevin. I think it's, you know, shooting a TV show is hard. Each scene takes like five, six hours. So it's, it's a difficult um, job. It's a hard job, but it's a, the best job in the world. Uh, I wouldn't train it for anything. Um, but I think those are, the, those are the hardest parts, just the grueling hours. And, but on top of the grueling hours, I wish I had more grueling hours. <laughs> But speaking to that, do you think because you have so limited time to communicate who your character is, do you think that that's an extra challenge for you? That you could have X amount of scenes to sort of convey? Yeah, I always, I always want to figure, because I kind of figure out Kevin as I play him, you know what I mean? Like the only things I know about Kevin are what's said in the scripts. Mm -hmm. So the more there is in there, the more I feel like I figure out who he is and how to play him and, and what, what is going on. Like I, I don't know who my mom is. Like, who is Kevin's mom? <laughs> but she's alive, because we've talked about her. Uh -huh. She's on a naval base somewhere, and my dad is actively cheating on her. But that's all I know. So, like, I'm hoping we find out who the mom is. That's, that's season three. There we go. Who's Kevin's mom? <laughs> well, howdy. Howdy. Howdy, how are you today? I'm, I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm tired, but... I'm, I'm enough, a little, but little tired. About yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a little tired as well, but... Go ahead, I shoot. Have, like, a, a favor. I have a cousin that lives in Ponce and she couldn't be here, so can you say hi for her? Yeah, what's her name? A Allison? Alyssa. 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 So tell us when. Hey, Alyssa. <laughs> I wish you were here. Everyone cheer for Alyssa. <laughs> Like I made a joke to our writer, like I could be, and he was like, "Calm down." He was like, he's "You're like, not a black man." Yeah. He's like, "That's cute." Yeah. He's like, "Yeah." He's like, "Go drink your coffee somewhere else." <laughs> You're welcome. Next question. Hello. Hey. 
Good afternoon. And I hope you're having a good time. The best. And, and I just want to say thank you for playing Kevin. And thank you for just being here because some of us need it, you know, to have a fun time in a panel and, you know, to hear from you and to actually see you and that you're seeing us. Yeah. Kind of like little-minded. Well, thank you guys for having me, truly. And thank you for coming here, because if you guys didn't come here, I wouldn't be able to come. So, that I return the thanks right back to you, okay? Thank you. Well, um, I, have, I have a friend. I have a friend, and she was more of a verbal Riverdale fan than me. And she's the one who introduced me. She was like, wash it, wash it, you just have to. And I was like, okay, I'll wash it. And I really liked every character. So I just want to, you know, We're doing another shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what's the name of your? Camille. Say the name again. Camille. Camille. It, it, Camille. It's like Camila. Like Camila. Yes. So. Camille. Your name is very similar to Camila, and I wanted to say hello from both me and Camila to Camille. <laughs> what's your uh, non sentence? Kevin centric story. That's your favorite uh, thing they've done in the show that you've gotten, you enjoyed as an audience. I like Hiram. I think he added a lot. He spiced up. I was kind of bored. Like, I think Camila and Marisol are the best. I think Camila plays Veronica, is an insane actress and singer and dancer. Uh -huh. She's amazing. But their family storyline, I was kind of like all season one, kind of just bored. I was like, where's the dad that we keep talking about? I don't want to hear about him anymore. It's so boring. And then Mark Consuelos comes in and hits a home run, and he's such a stud. He's such a good actor. Um, and so I, I really like that storyline. Cool. Well, my other question is, is if Riverdale existed like now, who would you be that wasn't Kevin? And what would you do in this circumstance that happened on um, not the final season, the before season that everything, no, after the Carrie episode, that everything was in chaos and, you know, died, I don't want to say. But what would you react to being the character that was Kevin? Um, so one at a time, which one would you be, so, do you think you'd be in real life? If Riverdale was real, which character do you feel know, that you'd be more like? I, you know what, I think these characters, I, I, here's the thing about these characters. You can find a little bit of yourself in each of them, because they're each kind of caricatures, which is like, I don't know, if it's basically an extent, like a very exaggerated form of a human. Uh, so I don't know if there's one specific I would be like. I, I find a little bit of me in like Betty, and Archie, Veronica, and all of them. Uh, Jughead, um, but no one likes Jughead, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Feel the audience I turn know. on you. Whoa, 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 whoa. They um, love you until they don't. Literally. Um, my reaction to the Carrie incident would probably be just a freak out because someone got nailed to a backdrop. Um, I don't know if that happens. I, I don't think that happens anywhere in the world, but if I experienced that, I'd probably have to go to a lot of therapy. I'd probably uh, need to see someone. Um, but uh, I but don't know if that answers question. But in a less extreme setting, like how do you, do you handle stress for? Are you? No, I'm not going to be stressed. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out, I'm freaking out all the time. Like when I get stressed on set, like Cole and KJ are like, calm down. <laughs> They're like, sit down, calm down, Great. shut your mouth before you say something stupid. Um, but luckily, we all know how to handle each other's stress. <laughs> yeah, good friends. Good say, it's nice to have supportive yeah. castmates. <laughs> oh, you don't even know. <laughs> Next question. Thank you for being here today on the con. Um, my question was, if you for Riverdale to cross over with any of the CW shows or Greg uh -huh. Berlanti, Greg Berlanti produced shows, which one would it be? I want to see Riverdale cross over with Black Lightning because could you imagine? <laughs> because what would Kevin think when he saw that start to happen? He'd be like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> because superpowers don't really exist in our world. Mm. So if all of a sudden we saw that happening, we'd be like, "This is the." I just think it'd be hysterical. I think Kevin specifically should have his own scene of watching him react. That would be the funniest, weirdest thing that I've ever seen ever. So, I'd be all about that. But that would be like your smallest arc ever. <laughs> yeah. Also Supergirl. I think Finn from Supergirl and Kevin would have like an amazing scene 
where they were both just like, who are you? And they'd be like, oh, who are you? And then be like, what are you doing over there? And be like, shut up. Um, but I think that would be fun. I would put Kevin as working with Kelly Staff somehow. Oh, yeah. With Kat. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. But I can see that, too. I can see that, too. All right. <laughs> Next question. Hi. Okay, so I have two questions for you. Okay. The first question is, if you could choose a plot from one of the other characters on the show to happen to Kevin, what would it be and why? I would like to see, no, this is going to sound very strange, but, um, like, if you put Kevin into Archie's shoes this year, where, like, someone shoots Kevin's dad and he's, like, out to find them, I think that'd be really fun to watch. It's kind of exciting, Kevin, we haven't seen, is him, like, kind of putting his boots to the turf and getting, like, angry, or getting upset, or really doing something intentionally to take someone down. Um, it's always kind of funny with Kevin. So I, I would like to see something like that. Since you're in the beginning of your career, uh, and this is your first uh, character that you have to carry through all the episodes yeah. that you've done, was it sort of a relief when you got to walk away from him and do another uh, another yes. character for the film? If you oh talk about gosh. that, was it was he easy to leave behind and sort of jump into another character? The, the guy I played in this, so I just shot this movie, and the guy I played is kind of this like bully, loud talking, almost like racist, awful. Just obnoxious guy. And so for the first day on the set, I was really nervous because I was like, I've been playing this kind of like proper, goofy, funny guy. Um, and then it was just like, they had to be like, all right, man, you got to calm down. Like we had to bring it down. Um, so for the first day, it was, it was tough. And then it was very liberating. It was very exciting and very fresh. Um, and luckily, I worked on this movie with some really, really, really solid actors. So they'd be like, hey, man, that, that was a little too much. <laughs> or they'd be like, so, um, but it, it felt very, very, very good to do that. So, do nerves ever go away? Because it seemed to be like a nope. recurrent. Thing. Nerves never leave, man. Yeah. If you care about it, you're going to be nervous, yeah. right? Like, yeah. if you go on a date with someone you care about, you're nervous, right? Um, so, I just think that never really leaves, no matter who you are. There's, there's certain. I don't get nervous to go to Riverdale set anymore. Like, that's gone. Um, but there's certain scenes where I get like a little, like, oh, I, I haven't done this yet. I have to figure out how to do this. Um, but yeah. Who made you the most nervous when you were beginning, when you, got, when you didn't really know your castmates? Hmm. You know, at first, you can never tell him this, because <laughs> now he's, he's my best gonna, friend. He's not going to yeah. find out. No, we're, um, it's just the first us. time I was with Cole, I was like, man, you were on that, you were, like, <laughs> I've seen you before, and you're, you're like, strikingly ugly no you're, you're strikingly <laughs> handsome and like you're here and he's very confident he's very smart um and and i, I remember meeting him being like all right i gotta you know and then you see kj and he's like a freaking male model um and then you meet camila and well you meet the most beautiful people you've ever seen and then you see madeline who's literally an anomaly of a human She's, so i think the first time i met them all first time i met them all they had already all become friends and we were in a room and I just had to go down one by one and say hi, and then we read the script out loud. So the first time they ever met me, that's not intimidating. So I was sitting there, and Luke Perry's there, and and Machen, they're all sitting there, and I remember just being like, if you do a bad job right now, you're gonna get fired, um, which just happens. So I think that was that was pretty intimidating. Um, but don't ever tell Cole that because we won't, we won't. He doesn't need to hear that. <laughs> Next question. My second question was. Pick any character, let it be historically or another actor, to play in a biopic. Who would it be? Play me in a biopic? No, no. Oh, if you could play, play in a biopic. somebody in a biopic. It's a great question. It'd, prob it'd probably be. It'd, pro it'd either probably be a politician or a sports figure. Um, there's this. There's this football player that nobody really knows named Doug Flutie. He's always been my favorite football player. He's this random guy. He's famous for throwing this Hail Mary and this... He played for Boston College. That's so random, <laughs> but the first thing that comes to my head. Um, I'd love to play like a politician, like Gary Oldman did, Darkest Hour. He played Winston Churchill this year. Um, um, something like that. Somebody who did something that, 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 that's so great and there's a big story, but there's like a better story underneath it. Um, 
I love stories like that. I don't know if that fully answers your question, but I would love to do uh, a biopic because you're, you're playing someone that's real and there's so much you can, so much, depending on when they lived, there's so much research you can do. And like when Daniel Day Lewis played Lincoln, mm -hmm. um, he did it as best, literally did as best he could. So I, I really like, I really like stuff like that. I love Ray. You've seen the movie Ray? Yeah. The movie Walk the Line. Yeah. Joaquin Phoenix plays Johnny, maybe Johnny Cash. No, Elvis. There we go. It's Elvis. I knew that the whole time. Sorry, it's Elvis. That took a while. My hair's got to get a little higher, but then it's going to be Elvis. I've I always wanted to play. I can see that. Yes. Hello. Hi. My question is for my best friend who didn't make it today. So her question is, what has been your favorite day from both seasons? My favorite? Oh man. No pressure, but this is going to be This is inappropriate. To the this is inappropriate, but I saw it last night. There's this part in the and it's very relevant now because it just happened finally at the end of season two. Um, but the, I go up to Betty at the at the dance in the first episode and say, um, uh, you're never gonna guess who just approached me in the bathroom. His name might be Moose, but I describe a certain appendage of his as horse-like. <laughs> that line we laughed so hard for so long trying to film. It's highly inappropriate, but it, like I have a sense of humor of a five-year-old. Um, season two, um, Betty's ponytail is iconic and beyond approach. Like that's <laughs> such an uh, iconic Kevin line. And so he's just so mad at Tony because she knocked. She knocked that ponytail. So I think those are my two that I can remember. Also, Archie got, you know. Oh my god, Archie got. Like that's <laughs> Kevin's line, right? Someone has it on a t-shirt here today, so. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hi. Why? Because you like your life. Um I have a question. Okay. What's that? Can I say spoiler? You can say whatever you want, I'm sure. Okay, well, Bring everybody in the room is up to speed, I think. <laughs> Pretty sure. Well, my first question is, like, what do you think about um, Moose and Kevin's last kiss? Like, that was really something. Do you think they should develop a relationship? Or what do you think about that? I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but it seems like it's going to be some sort of weird kind of quiet, not in the open thing, I think. Mm -hmm. um, or it could just, they could just start dating. Um, or they, maybe Moose is like, I don't want to be with you. Or Kevin, maybe Kevin's like, I don't want to be with you. Um, but I honestly don't know what they're going to do. Whatever they're going to do, there's going to be something there, clearly. Um, it'd be really weird if there was just nothing there. But um, I'm sure there'll be some sort of interesting story that's very dramatic and dark, just like the rest of Riverdale. <laughs> The, proud of him. the first guy he dated was literally mopping up blood and dumping bodies. <laughs> so, like, anything is moving up from there. Um, <laughs> um, there was a while where people thought Fangs and, and Kevin were going to get together, but Kevin was hooking up with Mitch, who then got crucified, who was dating Moose. It's just a hot time. It's like so much. <laughs> um, but I think it's they a will, small town. It's a very small town. I think they're going to develop something there for sure. A serpent. Um, do you think that when Kevin was dating Joaquin, he could have become a serpent like Cheryl? I don't think Kevin. I I don't know. <laughs> that might be a stretch. Like, like what is Kevin gonna do over there? Like, unless he's like putting a front on and like is actually like a secret drug lord or like a serial killer, like a murderer. Um, oh, which time. would kind of be pretty sweet. I'd be into playing that. Like, Kevin gets really weird, um, but we'll see. I don't think Kevin fits in the service side. Oh, thank you. Sounds yeah. like the title of an episode, Kevin Gets Really Weird. Kevin Gets Weird. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure there's... <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you for taking the time to be here. And of course. And my question was, what's your favorite thing about your film stars and just the Riverdale cast in general? Um, I think 
We, I think their sense of humor, each person's sense of humor is my favorite thing. Kind of keeps us, keeps us going. Like we all just like to make each other laugh really hard. Um, and I, I think we make it our goal to make each other smile and laugh as much as possible. So that makes really long days really fun. You know, there isn't anyone on the, on the call sheet that I get that I'm like, man, I don't want to work for that person. You know, there's just, there's just none of that. Um, so that makes it really fun, and they're very kind and sweet and humble and funny, and we just have a blast. We just have a good time, you know. We're just normal kids, often. Actually, I'm not a kid. I'm an adult, but I play as a kid. Let's put you on the spot. Who's the funniest behind the scenes? They're so funny. KJ's so weird. <laughs> like, Elaborate. How weird is KJ? He's so goofy, man. I don't even know what that kid's doing half the time. He'll send me some video and I'll be like, what the? What is that? Cole's really funny because he's so, he's so smart. Um, Lily is so funny. And Cammy's, Cammy's funny. Um, Charles is ridiculous. He's the most ridiculous person I've ever met. Like, hands down. Um, but he has the ability to make anyone laugh at any given time. Um, so they're, they're all really funny. I, I, KJ can make me laugh just by like looking at me. So for today, but ask me tomorrow, it'll be, if you ask me tomorrow, Mark is really funny. They're very funny. Next question. Hi. Right now I'm Casey. <laughs> I'm just teasing. That, you can call me whatever, you're, you're good. Maybe not whatever, but. <laughs> What were your thoughts and reaction when you found out you were going to play Kevin? Um, I freaked out. I was so stoked. I was geeking out. I didn't even know what was going on. Um, I got cast at like midnight and I had to fly to Vancouver the next morning from New York. So it was crazy, the timing. I didn't even have time to really think about it. Um, but just, it was just so exciting. It was such an exciting time. But again, you don't really know anything at that point. You, you just have a script and then you, you don't really know what's going to happen. The show could have gotten, not gotten picked up, so we could have just shot the first episode and been done. And then you shoot the series, you don't really know if people are going to like it. Um, and so, but there's this really fun time of like possibility, like maybe this show could do well, maybe this could be my first job. Um, and when I was watching the Pilot yesterday, I was reminded of like that joyful innocence that we all had of like, man, we have no idea what's going to happen, you know? Um, and I think we've tried to grasp onto that throughout this show, but it was just pure excitement. And your second question? My second question is, who from the cast first? Say that again? From the, who from the cast did you meet first? Lily. Uh, Lily, <laughs> we, so since I was cast so late before we did that table read, uh, we wanted to, the, the, the director and the writer wanted to have a rehearsal with me. They grabbed Lily to come in. I remember I got in a car and Lily was in the car and she introduced herself and she was like, she was sitting in the front row and she was like, do you mind if we stop at McDonald's on the way? <laughs> I was like, this girl's awesome. Um, so I met her first. We ended up growing up 15 minutes apart from each other in Cleveland. So um, she's always been, we've always been very, very close. Um, and I think it's very, like picture perfect desk that we met first. I think it kind of set the tone for our relationship throughout the past couple years. When did you get a sense that the, I mean, that Riverdale was being a hit? Did you have that wave of knowing that? You know, I remember the first episode we were trending on Twitter, um, but then we got the ratings and the live ratings weren't very good. Mm. And because no one watches our show live. You know what I mean? Everyone watches it on, on later or on Netflix or on the CW app or whatever. Um, and then, you know, like we got, I had like, I remember I got like 10,000 Instagram followers and I was like, okay, like this is kind of cool. And then, you know, it, it started getting, you know, cool and, and then it went on Netflix and then all of a sudden, I think around the time of San Diego Comic Con last year was when I was like, this is, this is starting to steamroll. And then since then, it's just become a whole new level. Like, so it, it kind of happens over time, but once the wheel starts turning, it just starts rapid spinning, and then it gets crazy. And then, like recently, like, you'll have like a really famous actor.
actor that I love come up and be like, hey man, like I've, I've seen a couple episodes of like the show. It's like, don't be embarrassed to watch Riverdale. <laughs> or like a lot of um, celebrity actor parents, their kids watch the show and that's always cool because they'll be like, can I get a photo for my kid? And I'll be like, like you want a photo with me? That's crazy. So when those things happen, you kind of remind it. You know, I'm going to be evil journalist and I'm going to dig in. You got to give names. Like who is like the way that, who would you, who asked for a picture? Who is the weirdest Riverdale fan that you encountered? I was, Unexpected. I'm a huge Andrew Garfield fan. There you go. Um, and he plays Spider-Man. He plays Spider-Man. Um, he, he's in Hacksaw Ridge and everything he's done, he's just such a talented actor. Um, he's doing a play in New York right now. So I was walking down the street in New York the other day, and I saw him. And we were not in a public area. And I never do this because I, I know, like, you know, you don't want to interrupt people, but I was like, hey, Andrew, Andrew, and he was like, yeah. I was like, congrats on your Tony nomination, and he was like, he was like, are you an actor? And I also had not showered or shaved and was wearing a hat. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. He was like, you're on Riverdale. I was like, yeah, and he was like, man, I just finished full seasons, like, I love the show. And that was really cool because he's an actor that's a little bit older than me who's had this illustrious career. And it just like, it just made my day because there's an actor that I love who watched my That's show. Cool. You know, um, so that was really that was really cool. Who was the first casting that you texted to tell them that Andrew Garfield was the Riverdale? Well, fan? it was really funny because it was it was um, the the morning after the, there's a big party in New York every year called the Met Ball, the Met Met Gala, yeah. um, and Cole and Lily went this year. Um, Together, I'm sure you saw. Um, which, thank God, because now I don't have to answer 400 of you asking me if they're dating or not. Um, but they were like, Andrew Garfield approached us at this party last night. And I, was, I had breakfast with them the next morning. They were like, Andrew approached us last night. So right after I left, I bumped into him. So I knew a little bit he might have been a fan of the show. But the way he, he talked to me was so kind. Um, so I texted him right away. And then I texted Mark. I was like, dude, Andrew Garfield likes the show. He was like, awesome guy. <laughs> next question. Uh -huh. The face of innocence hits you with the question. How, how old are you? 25. Very, very old. That's like the best question of the day. So can we get for like a little? It's it's um you know when you're an actor when you're when you're lucky enough to get a job as an actor which most actors can't it's it's such a hard industry you you're constantly um I don't really have a a home like a house I just go from place to place to place. And I, sometimes I just want to like open my door and like sleep in my bed, but I'm constantly moving. So I think that's really hard. I'm excited one day to have my own big house with my own bed and like a dog. And that's, that's gonna be my happy, do you have a dog? Yeah, see, I want one of those. Um, so that, that's, that's the hard part for me, is I, I like to have, Oh, you know. So one day I'll have that. <laughs> I'm on the market for a house. <laughs> Kidding, I'm not. Hey. I am. What's your name again? Yanni. Yanni. So there's a big thing on the internet about your name. Right now. <laughs> That's actually my fake name. My full name is Yanni Lee. Okay, good. <laughs> favor? Um, sure. I, Depending on what it is, but yes. My friend Francesca couldn't make it to the panel, so I was hoping that you could say hello to her. Of course. W what's the name? Francesca. 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 Hello. I wish you were here. We're having a blast. You should be here. Are you guys having a blast? Yes! Good. Okay, and for my question is that would you like for Riverdale to cross over with the new Netflix show, The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina? 
Yeah, I would. I want it to be. I I do want that. Um, I want it to be super subtle though. Like I have this idea of like Archie and Kevin and Betty and Veronica and Jughead just kind of like walking down the street as we pass Sabrina and the other kids, and like that's it. So you just know they exist in the same world, but like it just teases for the future um, some sort of crossover. So I think season one, if we could do like a little tease, I think that'd be awesome. I don't know how that's gonna work because of businessy, blah blah blah, technical stuff. But um, I think it'd be really cool. You guys should watch that show. It's gonna be insane. Like next year, they should all be here. It's gonna be insane. Hi. I have two questions. The first one is, how is your relationship with the character playing on the game? Right now, it's like strong. Um, yeah, so, so, so the guy who played Joaquin, his name is Rob, um, super nice guy, really talented actor. It's funny because that relationship is such a big part of season one, but in actuality, we only worked together maybe five, six days. That is crazy. So, <laughs> I remember the first day I made him was the first time we made out. Um, um, and... What was it, like a Tic Tac? It, it, yes. Yeah. No, we had tuna sandwiches and then we had Tic Tacs. Nice. Um, I'm not. <laughs> but I was nervous because I hadn't made out with anybody on screen before. Like I don't—that's not a normal thing to do. Like I've also never made out with anybody with 50 people around watching. Um, but luckily, he was like, "Have you done this before?" And I was like, "No." And he was like, "I got you." So he kind of took the reins on that. And um, after that, we had a great working relationship. He was super kind, super nice guy. Um, yeah, he was great. Second question is: If you were the high you were like. <laughs> you got um, to you get to think about Kevin the the serial killer. Who would Kevin want to kill first? Um, Kevin's like too nice. Like he he'd probably kill like oh he'd probably kill who was ever if he was gonna go that crazy and be a killer. He'd probably kill who would ever talk bad about his dad. I think I think that's something he's pretty sensitive about. So pretty much he would kill the entire town. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't really know. Maybe uh, Mama Cooper? Is he... Because she's like all up in Betty's grill. Like, although I secretly think that Miss Cooper loves Kevin. We need a, we need a Kevin and Mrs. Cooper scene. We never have one. Like, does she like Kevin or not? I don't even know. So those are the things I, I will we'll, we'll find out soon. Find out soon. I like your outfit. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question was, when you're not filming Riverdale, what do you do? Like in I go out to eat. Um, <laughs> like I, like it's bad. I, I have not, I live in New York right now for um, almost a month and a half and I haven't gotten groceries. Like it's, it's like disgustingly bad. Um, like my so we're mom, talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner out? Yeah, usually like brunch and dinner. Um, um, I have like 15 pints of ice cream. <laughs> I have ice cream and that's it. But we just do not eat like that because I'm just, my body's starting to fail. Um, so I really like to go out to eat. Um, I like to see plays in New York. I like to watch movies and TV. Um, but going out to eat is my favorite thing. So another question I had was, if you like going to see plays, what's your You know, I don't have a favorite. I just, I see so much. Um, my brother's an actor too, and he's been on Broadway. Um, he was in Newsies, and that was really good. Um, he was in a musical called Bandstand last year. That was one of my favorites. Um, but there's so many, there's just so many good ones, you know? Yeah. Just out of curiosity, did you ever have that conversation with your brother in terms of, did, did he, has he watched the show? Did, do you have some of it, yeah. yeah. Does he give you any critique, or what was that conversation like? He doesn't give me critique on Riverdale. Um, <laughs> we, we, you know, he's a really good actor, he's a really great actor, so we talk about acting a lot. Um, I think if I did a play, I'd totally have him. He'd definitely come watch it, and I'd totally take in exactly what, I, what, what he would say. And, um, but with Riverdale, he does not give me acting notes. <laughs> That'd be hilarious if he did. But he's the best. We're not. We're best friends, so that makes it really fun. And do you ever be interested in doing something with him? Yes, we very much. I think after Riverdale, whatever he's doing, I think 
hopefully we could do a play or musical. That'd be that'd be one of my dreams for sure. Cool. Yeah. Hi. How are you? Good and you? Good. And I got one question. What was the funnest part about playing queer music? Oh my gosh. The the the, the, the dancing. The dancing, watching KJ dance. <laughs> K, KJ created an alter ego named Fifi, and she, she was she was something else. Uh, but just watching them dedicate to those dances was so much fun. It was awesome. Of course. Hi. Hey, he's my girlfriend, and she's scared, and she asked you to like say hi to her in a video. Okay. What's her name? Alondra. 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 Yeah. Hey, you should be here. You have the best boyfriend in the entire world. And you should kick those nerves aside and come say hello. Alondra. Alondra. <laughs> hey. First of all, I wanted to ask for a, for a shadow for my girlfriend. Okay. Like three songs for Casa Polish. Okay. Her name is Asmi. Catherine. Catherine, this is your personal shout out. Finish your homework and get your butt over here. <laughs> so, my question was if you have the opportunity to be in another series of CW, in which would you like to be in? Oh. I like The Flash. Yeah. Um, If Grant, Grant decides to quit, I'll take over for Grant. That'd be pretty <laughs> fun. Yeah. Next question. Hi, Gates. Hey. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate you on a good show. Thank you. It's a show I want to do. So, we all appreciate the diversifying show. You've been very much in your own way. Question to you today. What would be your the best episode that you've done on Riverdale? Ooh, that's a good question. I really like I really like the first episode. I think when you create a the pilot, you know, the first episode is called the pilot. It's the most important thing because it sets the tone for the entire show. Um, it establishes each character. It establishes the main story for the entire first season. It decides whether the show's ever going to be made. Um, and I was watching it, I was watching it, like, like I said, and the way it's done, I just think it's done with such finesse and such craft, down to the music selection is so important. Um, the way it's shot is so well done. It's super stylized and also dark, but also comical and both the funny and in like a comic book way, it's shot so quickly. So I think that's I think that's my overall favorite one. I don't think I'll ever get tired of watching that episode. And then I discover a dead body. <laughs> that's pretty cool. You mentioned how quickly and obviously the the, the work that it takes to put a, a TV show. How do you feel about holding on to one character while switching directors? How is that experience as an actor? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, um, you probably had like 30 different directors at this point. Not 30, maybe 25. Um, each one is different, each one is is smart, each one has their own body of work. Um, some are great, some are not great, some I love, some Cole loves. It just depends on who it is, but you kind of learn how to how to adjust to to um, what what they want and also also humbly sometimes going, hey, I just wanna remind you this happened like a couple episodes ago in the plot. So like do you think this might inform this, and oftentimes I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for saying that. Um, but most of our directors are phenomenal. Um, what do you, well, not to name any names, but what do you, when you say you love something about the director, what do you love about the I director? I love a director that gives me notes. Like, I want someone to be like, hey, let's, like, I'm gonna help make this really great. Like, I, I want someone hands on telling me, like, not what to do by any means, but to be like, hey, let's try it this way. Let's think about this. Let's do this. Because I think that's the kind of finesse. And acting that I enjoy when it's really done with specificity, um, and I find when the director isn't really giving me too much, I, I get a little more like in my head, or I get a little more frustrated. But I mean, 
you know, someone like Luke Perry probably thinks it differently than I do because mm. he's he's uh, done it for so many years. He kind of knows exactly what he wants. Um, but granted, Luke will work with anyone because he's the nicest guy in the world. Do you learn from him by just watching? I, I mean, do. Luke. I learn more from Luke from his stories. I, I, I rarely work with Luke. Like, how many Kevin, Mr. Andrew shoot scenes are there? <laughs> um, but I learn from his stories and the way he interacts with people outside of set, the way he interacts with the crew. He knows every person's name and their their kid's name and their grandma's name. And he's just, he's so sweet. Next question. I know that Smallville had been a few years ago already. What would you think of the merging of the Smallville TV show with Riverdale would look like? Would you want that at Smallville? I want that, I'll tell you why. <laughs> because there is a guy on This Is Us, which is really my show right now, yeah. who was on Smallville. Um, his name is Justin, I think. But I met him at a party the other night. There was the cast of This Is Us at the party the other night, and I was freaking out. And I went up to him, and I was like, hey, man, I love your show. He was like, yeah, yeah. He was like, Do you, are you an actor? And I was like, yeah, I'm on Riverdale, shooting Vancouver. And he was like, I shot Smallville in Vancouver. And I was like, we got to merge. We got to <laughs> so, so I would merge those two, yes. Purely to hang out with that guy. Hey. Um, I have two questions. Okay. One. <laughs> um, first question is, um, if it were to be the end of the world, what? Wow. That got deep real quick. <laughs> what character would you like to work in your life with? Wow. That got Barbara Walters right there in a second. Um, I think Elvis, like that still would be cool, the Elvis biopic. Like that's my Oscar. <laughs> and the second question is, um, what's your favorite lady? Your favorite what? What's your favorite place? What's your favorite place to go on vacation? Oh man, that's a good one. I think you said, what's your favorite bacon? I, was like, I, had, I, I, I heard bakery. I'm like, like sure, he like, eats out. I'm sorry, I'm just. You're so okay. My favorite place to vacation. Well, I mean, I've never been to Puerto Rico before, but now in Puerto Rico, I'm coming here all the time. See, that's how it's done. I was like, no pressure, but you know. It depends. I actually got here late last night and walked on the beach, and it was so nice. Um, it, but it depends on the time of year. Like, in the winter, I, like, I, I like the cold. I'm weird. I'm really weird. But like, I would love to go like to London in the winter or see a play. But right now, I'm just craving exactly what this is this is giving. I'm very happy up here. Hawaii is pretty cool too. I think there's a favor. What what is it? Uh, do you know the face the new faces that KJ Abba makes? Which this anyone in particular really? you're thinking about? What's your favorite? He does, I can't do his face. The Grinch one. <laughs> I can't even do it, but he does it and he looks exactly like Jim Carrey, the Grinch, who got snubbed for not screaming. <laughs> All right, next question. That's it, Oh. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You need to speak into the mic a little bit more. What is your favorite season and what's the most you hate of that, of that season? Um, I'm very excited for season three. Um, I kind of think of Riverdale as one long continu like continuation. There's, there is different seasons, but season two picked up 15 minutes after season one mm -hmm. uh, in, in the world of, of Riverdale. So I, I don't really separate them into seasons. I know they are. Um, but, but I kind of like that it's one continuous thing. And I think season three will pick up right where season two left off. I think, I'm not totally sure, but I believe it will. So I'm excited for, for that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, one question. Okay. Question. Do you like Harry Potter? I love yeah. <laughs> 
I am Cedric Diggory. Wow. And Robert Pattinson <laughs> played him well, but I have a vendetta against that guy because that's my role. Have you seen the play? Not yet, but Not I'm yet. going. I'm going in a couple weeks. Cool. I'm very excited. I'm so excited. No, no, I've read it, but I want to see it so bad. I, that's true. I haven't read it because I'm like trying not to. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Her name's Natalia. Natalia? Natalia. No, Natalia. 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 <laughs> How are you, Natalia? <laughs> Natalia. <laughs> Do you like Star Wars? I do like Star Wars. Well, I'm excited I, for the Han Solo movie. I auditioned for the Han Solo movie. You did? Oh yeah, that's how I got my agent when I was in college. I auditioned wow. for the Han Solo movie. It was a fluke. It was a fluke. Well, I love you... the actor playing Han Solo though. Have, uh, have you seen Hail Caesar? Sorry, I yeah, yeah. That. He's in that movie. He's fantastic in that movie. Also, also Donald Glover. It's gonna be amazing. And Woody Harrelson. It's gonna be amazing. Well, it could crash too. I don't know. What are you choosing the light side and the dark side? What, what side would you prefer? Anakin pre dark side. Like, I. Like, raising no, those. That's ships. rarely specific to question. <laughs> you're getting, we're getting very deep here. <laughs> um, but definitely light side. I don't think I'm dark side. I. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. There, I, I, like the, I like the green and the blue lightsabers too. Like, I want to. You know, I don't want the red one. Hi, I'm back. Um, I wanted to ask you, if you weren't an actor right now, what do you think you would be doing? Sleeping a lot more. <laughs> um, I used to be a barista. I was a barista. I worked at a coffee shop for years, and I loved it. I would do it right. I would still do that if I could. Um, so maybe own my own coffee shop. I would love to do that. I would still hope to do that one day. Um, also, who are your role models? You're one of mine. Oh gosh. Thank you. Um, my brother's one. He's such a hard working actor. He's a very sweet person. He's very kind. Um, he's very diligent. My sister's also a wonderful person, so I look up to them a lot. My parents. I'm finding that. My role models are mostly people that I have very close relationships with, and I try to surround my people with people like that. You know, some of our cast are great role models, so I'm, I'm finding, finding role model as attributes in the people that are around me that I like or look up to. I'm feeling like, why do I look up to this person? What, what is the exact reason, you know? Um, so I'm, I, I, I think as I get older, I'm realizing that um, which characteristic in certain people I like or makes me feel makes me look up to them, I guess. Do you feel comfortable being in that position now? Because obviously no. you, you go up to... I'm like, do you, not. You're a no, fan. And, yeah. No, but I mean, you learn too. It's part of what we do is that people are always watching you and it's important to be setting a good example. So I try to try to do that while also just being myself and being nice. I don't know. You're doing I need to surround you somewhere that's like, do you want to hear some stuff? <laughs> you're doing a good job. Okay. So, next question. Thank you. Uh, I know this is weird, but will you do a shout out to me? Yeah. I'm here, but I will do that. Who are you dressed as? Wonder Woman. No. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I'm right. That's exactly right. And what's your real name? I gotta know your name. Aslan. Aslan. I just wanted to make it clear to everyone here that Aslan is the real Wonder Woman. <laughs> Period. As an actor, do you have any advice for any aspiring actors? Just work all day. Work, 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 work. In the words of Rihanna, work, work, work. Um, <laughs> you, just, you just have to prepare as hard as possible and you can't stop working. Um, and that's not like acting. Sometimes that's like, you know, you know, 
being healthy towards yourself or, or reading plays or watching movies and TV shows and just figuring out what you like and why you like it. Just keep working as hard as you can. He's gonna have to do it one at a time. I think I got it. There we go. Saidis yep. and Alianis, you should be here. Shout out to you guys. Her question was. Wait, well, you, you, I'm not answering it unless she reads it. You have to say it. Oh, come on. Come on. Okay, go ahead. I'll say it. <laughs> That's a good question, because I thought for a while he was. I was like, he's going down. I was like, here comes Kevin's mom. Um, that'd be tough for Kevin, because he loves his dad so much. He's constantly sticking up for him, even though his dad has done some questionable stuff. Um, so I don't know how Kevin would react to that. It'd be interesting to see him be upset, you know, um, and how he, he kind of reacts to that. But um, probably not well. Probably wouldn't go well. <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, my name's Brian. Hey, man. When I asked you to read favors, can you do a shout out for me and my friends? Yeah. <laughs> what are your names? This, this is like the shout out. Song. I know. I, 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 <laughs> my name is Brian, and my best friend's name is Shakira. Shakira. <laughs> Brian Shakira. Brian Shakira, this is your personal shout out. Question. Yes. Stranger things in Riverdale were to do a Yes. Go on. Go on. <laughs> what would you think would be the best thing about it, the best outcome? I would get to meet the cast of Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I need. That's all I need. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, I have a question. What's that? If you could make a TV series, what would it be about? Another TV series, because oh, well, you're making Yeah, I, well, I can't tell you, because you guys are going to steal my idea. But <laughs> it'd be in the vein of The Office. Have you guys seen The Office? That's my favorite show of all time. It would be in the vein of that. Gonna be, I'm going to be in the original office or the U.S. office? The U.S. office. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. Hey. So it's going to be like a silly question. Um, Great. But, uh, you guys can ask me he, anything. What did he go to school for? I know, like... I went to college for acting and musical theater. Okay. Yeah, I studied acting. Also, can you give me a shout out to Wilsey? <laughs> Wilsey, like Wilsey. Rosie? Wilsey. 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 Like Wilsey about that. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's my name, by the way. I just okay. want to be able to be like, oh, five months from now. Wilsey. Wilsey. A lot of shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wilsey, you are now five months older. And I'm probably still wearing the same sweater. <laughs> Speaking of silly questions, if we make it to New York, where would, would you take us for brunch? Oh, that's a good question. Um, there's a place called Sarah Betts that I love. There's a place called Good Enough to Eat that I love. Um, there's lots of really good Mexican restaurants that are really fun for brunch. Um, there's so many places to brunch in New York. The Rainbow Room is this really beautiful, like, 50 stories up, all you can eat buffet. That's, I love the Rainbow Room. Um, that's really fun. Also, sometimes there's a gro Do you guys have Whole, Whole Foods? Uh, no. We have, all right, there's a grocery store called Whole Foods in New York that has like a really good kind of hot buffet. Um, I like that too. Those are my favorite spots to go. Yeah. Next question. Can you shout out from my friends? Yes. <laughs> you know, you guys have guaranteed that when he does another Comic Con, it's going to be his contract. It's like, no shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, are your, what are your guys' names, though? Oh, okay. <laughs> Just a general shout out. This is Sophia, though. So, Sophia, yeah, Sophia, Sophia, Sophia and Friends. Sophia, Sophia and Friends, this is your shout out to all 457,000 of you. Um, please share this. Send, send love and hope to all. 
Merry Christmas. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, I really like Catch Me If You Can. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. It's like a, you know that's Leo. Spielberg and DiCaprio are working together again. Yes, I do know that. <laughs> um, yeah, Tom Hanks is one of the best ever. Leo, who's fantastic. Uh, Amy Adams, who I love. I just, I love that movie. It's based on a true story. Um, great movie. Timeless classic. Go on. You have a lot of shadows. Sorry, is my best. Okay. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy 92nd birthday, Alicia. <laughs> so no pressure, but I, it, it looks like, do we have a question or no? So I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it off with Have you gone to Bar Bacon? Uh, oh yeah, Bar Bacon. I've been there many times. That yeah, place is great. You, place, right on you did an you did an inception of bacon in my head. It's all oh, I've been Bar thinking about. Bar Bacon's really good. If you like bacon, mm. Mm -mm. All right. So let's try to convince him. I'm trying to. He's gonna. Are you gonna hit the restaurant and, and be a Hassan Juan today? Or? I think so. I'm not telling you where I'm going. <laughs> um, I actually don't know where I'm going, but I do think I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully eat somewhere outside and enjoy the sun. You know. All right. So let's give it up for Casey Cotts. Thank you so much for being so great. Muchas gracias, que disfruten el Comic Con.